It has been about three months now. Wow, actually three months on a dot since PR4 came out. And initially I gave uh, some preview reviews and what I expect from the ship and whatnot going forth. Uh, initial impressions, whatever you want to say. Today we're going to give a proper review, me personally, from what I've experienced. And what I recommend people go for if they wish to go for PR4. If you don't have any particular ship in mind, I know a lot of people are like really into August Von Parsifal. So she's a really hot ship. Um, but for people doing PR4 that don't have a clue as to who to invest into, like dump in Universal Prints and whatnot, I'm making this video for you today. All right. So with that being said, let's get started. So there's three SSR ships this time around. The lowest as of, out of any PR4 seasons or any PR seasons. Uh, PR1 had six. PR2 had four, I believe. And PR3 uh, also, actually, yeah, also had four. This season, we have three. So there's not much going around for this one. But that makes the video easier because it'll be shorter, right? That being said, let's get started. So our first ship we're going to go down the list is going to be Anchorage. Anchorage, if you're really into PvP, she's a really good ship. I'm seeing her everywhere in PvP nowadays. Now, there's other options as well, too, but Anchorage is just annoying because she will not sink because she has so much evasion going to, going on with her kit. That's just like, what do you do? You can't do anything, right? So she's really good in PvP. I've seen her used quite a lot. PvE, now, she's really durable. Don't get me wrong. But when you get to this stage of the game where you have Anchorage fully invested, there are better ships out there, and you should be worrying on you should be worrying about damage, not survivability. There's a reason why a lot of people in the early stages of the game use like Portland because she's very durable, but she doesn't do any damage. But she's good early game because you don't need that much damage. Later on, though, when you get into end, uh, end game content, like you have meta fights, um, the level 128 abyss uh, bosses and whatnot in OS, you gotta kill them fast because there's a timer. You want to do as a lot. You want to do as much damage as possible. Anchorage herself doesn't do that much. She has some decent damage, but there's a, there's a lot better um, either buffers or damage dealers out there. So you don't really want to invest into Anchorage that much for PVE. But if you're looking for just a solid tank for whatever content you're trying to do, then Anchorage is probably your go-to, right? She has a lot of sustain, a lot of shields, evasions, and all that jazz. Is a very durable ship, very very durable ship. Not to mention her voice actress is, can be pretty annoying to some people. I will say that a lot. Um, some people on my Discord are like, "Oh, she has a baby voice and whatnot." So good for PvP, not bad for PVE, but there's better options. Solid choice for investment. I'd say she's probably the best one out of the batch, though, for SSRs in PR4. Number two. We got August von Parsifal here. Now, initially, in my first initial impressions, I said she wasn't going to be a great ship. Um, I took that back after I made the showcase about two or three weeks ago. She's not bad at all. Very, very strong damage dealer. Pretty good. Now, the issue is that when you're doing, like, the the top, top, like, absolute, like, I want to go for, like, top made of 15 scores. So, like, I'm trying to single burst a, uh, in a, a level 6 abyss um, boss or whatever. There's better damage dealers out there. Uh, Shokaku, um, Shinano, Arc Royal. Th there's better damage dealers out there. But that being said, she's really, really good as well, too. She's not bad at all. She has a lot going for her kit, especially when you use uh, German fighters and whatnot. Because she has those. Uh, she has a skill that makes it so she gets more stuff if she if she equips uh, uh, Iron Blood aircrafts. So there's that. Not bad. Very good against heavy cruisers and light cruisers. Very, very good, actually. Um, I would probably put her a close second, if not first, depending on what kind of content you do. If you're lacking carriers, let's say you started late, like you started like last year, but you didn't get Shinano, um, you're probably missing that giant gap in your carrier power right now, so you don't really have Shinano. August von Parsifal is really good. You could probably invest into her. Arc Royal, um, August on Parsifal, with like Shokaku or Centaur, solid. Very, very solid. A lot of damage. A lot of good stuff going on with her kit. A lot of uh, additional planes and airstrikes. And like, her kit just has a lot of good amps going on with it. Very good. Now, obviously, though, I'm not a huge fan of it because you have uh, 
you have just one torpedo bomber slot but this torpedo bomber slot is very high efficiency so if i were to uh go into gear i hope that's gear it's gonna be scary. okay nice <laughs> let's say i toss in like a random plane uh i'm not gonna use my good uh, good ones right now but i'm using an example so let's just try to toss in the avengers 140 percent fighter slot is also 140 percent i believe so let's toss in a sea hornet i'm not using the other fighters also 140 percent now if you want to get the most out of it i recommend if you're doing like bossing or whatnot use the um the pr4 fighters that i'm pretty sure a lot of people are using right now these are very good so use these right here and if you were to use uh, single bossing, uh, single target bossing, use the junkers or whatever from the uh, gear labs. These are really good as well too. Iron blood boost efficiency. Use that, and then dive bombers to slide whatever you need for timers and whatnot. Good, good ship, good ship. So if you want just raw PVE damage, I say just go for August Vampire Civil. If you're looking for PVP, do Anchorage. I say they're both roughly around the same, but I think most people have Shinano, Arc Royal, and whatnot. So they really don't want to invest into August Von Parsifal, which is understandable. But if you don't if you're missing Shinano or whatever, you can, if you need like a not another strong carrier to use for the time being, August Von Parsifal is not bad at all. So, the last ship, Marco Polo. Now, three months, four months ago, I was talking I was saying to myself, listen. Marco Polo is going to be OP. I have a feeling she's going to be OP. I'm calling it right now. She's going to be OP. Fast forward three months later, she is absolutely horrendous. <laughs> I am not a fan of this ship at all. Now, she has a cool po uh, pose. She has the cool outfit or whatever, the hat, uh, staff, and whatnot. Really, really cool, right? But I'm just not a fan of this ship. Her damage is very lackluster. I did multi I did a few test runs with it and made a 15s because medium armor and she underperformed each time compared to like how. Even though how's not like a big big damage dealer. I'm not a big fan of this ship. Um the biggest take uh, the re biggest reason why I said why I don't think she's that good is because it's not the her barrage that's like super wide and whatnot. Like the first skill is fine, right? The legendary voyage is like the only good thing about her kit. The second part and third part of her kit just doesn't make sense. Like, it's all supporting skills, like evasion, damage reduction. Honestly, I just don't like those kits in this day and age. Like, damage reduction, uh, evasion and whatnot. I just don't like it. When it comes to a backline ship, I just want raw damage. Just raw, raw damage. And these two skills right here just don't do that. There's no firepower buff. There's no crit buff. The only time you can buff Marco Polo is using, like, Vanito. But that's another slot you gotta take up, and Vanito is not the best ship to have in PvE. For PvP, I guess she could be okay, but in PvP, there's better options, right? Everyone uses uh, Aquila, Vanito, and New Jersey in the back line for PvP. Marco Polo just doesn't fit there. So you gotta use her in PvE. But in PvE, she's just basically like Monarch. Um, no self buffers, a good barrage, but there's just no self steroids. There's no 10% firepower. There's no 12% firepower. Now, the only buff she has is Siren Killer. But if you're not fighting a Siren, then you're not going to do that much damage, right? I'm talking about like firepower, like a 10%, a, a flat 10% firepower buff or something like that. But that's not going to happen. So I'm not a big fan of her. If you're missing a battleship, there's plenty of battleships in this game. Plenty, plenty, plenty of battleships in this game. Not worth the investment. But if there's one thing you want to use Marco Polo for, it's going to be the Barrage. Where you have her in another fleet and you're just farming, right? Like 2-1 farming, 7-2 farming. Just have her in another fleet for Barrage farming. That's probably your only benefit you're going to get at with Marco Polo if you reach end game. Now, if you're like a mid-game player, you can get some use out of her. But there's just so much um, battleships in this game that you don't really have to invest in the Marco Polo. You can still invest in the other battleships and work perfectly fine. You really don't have to invest into her at all. And even then, you just skill up the yellow skill and just leave her there. I'm pretty sure. Because it's based on skill level, right? Like, the damage is based on skill level. Yeah. Like, you don't even have to max her out for this. You don't have to invest in the Marco Polo to get the most out of this skill right here. Just level up to level 10. Toss it into the second fleet. And then just farm. That's the only benefit you're going to get out of Marco Polo. Alright, so that being said... It's time for my personal uh, rankings or whatever, or what I recommend people go for. If you're a PvP head, Anchorage is probably your best bet. If you're a PvE head, probably August Von Parsifal is the best one here. Now, if you're overall though, I'd say Anchorage and August Von Parsifal are roughly the same. 
Now, I know some people are going to say uh, uh, Anchorage is the best ship here. And in terms of like what they excel at, probably true. Because Anchorage is very good in PvP right now. And August Van Parsifal isn't the best in PvE. But in terms of overall effectiveness, some people are missing some ships or whatever. August Van Parsifal is best in PvE out of this batch. Anchorage is best for PvP in this batch. And Marco Polo is just there for farming. You just toss her for just uh, off-fleet farming with cross barrages. And that's pretty much it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. If you have questions, feel free to let uh, let me know. The ships this time around are they're okay. They're not game breaking. Well, maybe Anchorage, maybe question mark. Uh, but they're not terrible ish, except Marco Polo. <laughs> they're alright, they're alright. I, I I don't want I don't want to trash talk them. I think I think they're alright, they're alright. So if you want to invest in either of them, most people are gonna finish all of them like roughly about end of the year maybe. Um just just do whatever you want to. I, I gave my review. They're all okay ish. Just do whatever you guys want. Enjoy the video, guys.